Well, good morning, guys. I hope your week is off to a good start. I'm just here with Totoro. It's very early morning, and it is getting hot here. The past few nights, I've been sleeping with this eye mask on that I got from my Fat Fit Fun Box, and it's fantastic, but it's a little toasty underneath this thing. Um, I just love it, though. It's really pretty. It does a, fan, a phenomenal job blocking out the light. Um, but I wish they had made one in a uh, slightly lighter fabric. Anyways, um, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of this video, today I'm going to show a morning skincare routine um, with you guys that you've kind of been asking for. You asked me a lot about applying makeup over sunscreen, something I admittedly know nothing about because I don't wear makeup. Um, and you asked me about um, how different mineral powders and setting powders might, might be incorporated. So today I thought I would show a little skincare routine with you all. Up until this point this morning, I have just done my normal skincare routine. And if, you've, if you're at all curious what that entails, um, I'll list it, that video down below. Um, but basically, I've already washed my face with my um, BHA face wash, and I have put on a good base layer of the Elta MD UV Clear um, sunscreen to my face, my neck, um, and my ears. So I have a good base layer of my sunscreen on. This sunscreen is free of avabenzone. No avabenzone is not problematic, but the reason I'm mentioning that will be important for later points that I'm gonna make in this video that address questions that I frequently get. So this, this sunscreen contains zinc and octinoxate, so it's a combination sunscreen. And the zinc in this is what is giving me um, good UVB and UVA protection, okay? So I'm relying on the zinc in this for UVA protection, not avabenzone. And I'll tell you in a minute why that's important. I just need to, I just need to get a sip of Totoro in here. And I've talked about in my other videos how I am a fan of using tinted sunscreens that contain the inactive ingredient iron oxide in them because tinted mineral sunscreens that contain that ingredient offer more protection against visible light, against blue light that we now know can drive post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. So selecting tinted sunscreens as kind of frosting on the cake over your base layer of sunscreen is really a helpful way to give yourself a little bit of extra coverage for those dark spots, hyperpigmentation, um, and melasma concerns that um, you know you may even be attempting to camouflage with some of these tinted tinted uh, sunscreens. A while back, I reviewed for you guys the Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy. This is a tinted mineral sunscreen, SPF 35, that is kind of designed to go around the eyes, but you've seen me continue to use it in my daily skincare routine to the apples of my cheeks. I really enjoy it. It does a phenomenal job um, masking uh, dark spots and hyperpigmentation and just kind of brightening the eye up. It's not heavy. It's moisturizing. You've seen me continue to use it. I really love it. A little bit goes a long way. You know, I'll use it here in this skincare routine. <clears throat> And since you all enjoyed my review of the Color Science 3-in-1 um, um, tinted sunscreen in, before, and I've continued loving it, they um, noticed that you guys were asking about how to incorporate mineral powders into your sun care routine. So they asked if I'd like to work with them again on this video to review their brush on sunscreen. And so today I'm going to talk about and show you guys their sun forgettable brush on sunscreen. This is an SPF 50 mineral sunscreen that I've been trying out um, over the past week and I really do like. Um, and they offer, they're offering you guys a, if you use a coupon code that I have down below, um, if you choose to get this product, you can also get, um, they'll also send you a free um, SPF 20 bronzer. Um, I've tried the bronzer out a few times and I actually really think it's a very nice bronzer. I'm just not someone who goes for a bronzed look, so it's not something that I would ever use. But if you use bronzers, I, I imagine that, that you will like this one. It's very moisturizing and very hydrating. I'm not going to use it in this routine because it's just not a look that I go for the bronze look I you know it's just not my it's just not my aesthetic <laughs> as a dermatologist to promote any sort of tan but many people like bronzers and um, you know they're fun particularly in the summertime so if that is you and that is part of your makeup routine then I think you would really like this one it's SPF 50 mineral exclusive fragrance free 
and also contains iron oxides for protection against blue light that drives hypopigmentation. It's very gentle. It doesn't have any exotic ingredients in it. It's actually pretty moisturizing um, and not not drying. So if you're somebody who has a lot of fine lines and wrinkles, um, one of the things that I um, think you will appreciate about the way they have formulated this powder is that it's it's formulated in kind of a dimethicone base, which is a fantastic moisturizing ingredient in powders like this. And rather than settling in those crevices, it kind of moisturizes a little bit and um, can impart kind of a brightening effect just by virtue of light scattering. So it's a really good uh, design for the powder. It's not heavy, it's very lightweight. And as far as how it comes, it's kind of cool. You just take the cap off and pop the bristles down. Um, the bristles themselves are um, kind of coated in this antimicrobial stuff so that um, it cuts down on the chances of biofilm. Uh, you still need to clean this once a week with an alcohol-based cleanser. They give you instructions on how to clean it. And as far as using it, you really wanna make sure that you get the powder down into the brush. You can see I've been using it, so it's you can see that there's powder down there, but when you first start using it, you're like, there's nothing coming out of here. So just, just massage it in a little circle on the top of your hand till it comes out. Um, but it's really smart packaging, excellent vehicle that the powder comes in. It's not drying uh, because of that diet, kind of dimethicone base. Not pore clogging, doesn't settle in pores, doesn't really make pores look more prominent, doesn't make fine lines and wrinkles look more prominent. The other reason, the other demographic and people that I think would find they really enjoy using this are people with rosacea. This is a good good makeup choice for someone with rosacea. Um, if you go on rosacea.org, they actually, it's a website uh, with lots of uh, helpful information for people with rosacea. And on, on that, you can find makeup tips. And people, it's well known that people with rosacea seem to tolerate mineral-based powders and mineral-based makeups uh, better than better than other makeups and the reason being they're just less irritating they have fewer ingredients and i really think the color science um, brush on sunscreen is is one that is very rosacea friendly in that manner so i'm going to be using it alongside my base layer of sunscreen which is the ulta md uv clear broad spectrum spf 46. This is a combination physical and chemical sunscreen. The physical component in this is zinc, and the zinc provides good protection against both UVB, the rays that damage our skin cell DNA and cause cancer, as well as UVA, the rays that penetrate really deeply into the skin, damage collagen, um, and also drive hyperpigmentation and can you know, of course, contribute to wrinkles as well. So the zinc in this formula is is giving me the broad coverage, and the octinoxate in this gives um, some UVB as well, so some cancer cancer ray protection. All right. The reason I'm telling you that is because in the United States, the other type of sunscreens that we have our chemical sunscreens and our chemical sunscreens have a filter in them not a not a physical mineral blocker like zinc but a filter called avabenzone so avabenzone is the filter in our chemical sunscreens that that provides uva protection and the problem with avabenzone is that it's not photostable as i've said in my other videos so it starts to degrade um, when it's exposed to light not only that but uh in the United States, we um, the FDA doesn't allow the high the higher percentages of avabenzone that are allowed in Europe in our sunscreens. So we're not starting out with that much as much as we could to begin with. The other problem or theoretical problem that um, you should know about and that I've mentioned in other videos and I get a lot of questions about is this idea that combining avabenzone with mineral sunscreens like zinc or titanium dioxide can hasten the degradation of the avabenzone. That has been demonstrated in in vitro, so in cell, you know, in laboratory conditions. You know, the zinc and titanium, they they scatter the light particles and in doing so, they could kick it to the neighboring neighboring avabenzone and cause it to photodegrade a little bit more a little bit more quickly. And for that reason, in the United States, you won't see sunscreens that contain both active, active mineral filters and avabenzone, all right? Our combination sunscreens do not have avabenzone in them, all right? And that's unfortunate, okay? Because 
sunscreen manufacturers are able to kind of get around this theoretical problem of that enhanced photo degradation by coating the zinc particles um, and by you know encapsulating them in different formulations so it's not entirely clear that that actually happens in real life okay um, but so it's it's largely theoretical okay and it's unfortunate because you can imagine that the combination of zinc and avabenzone together would really give you potentially a very good UVA, a very good, you know, package for UVA protection. But that combination in our sunscreens here in the United States is not allowed. Now, if you're in Europe or Japan, you have UVA chemical filters like uh, bimetrizinol or tinosorb that are very photostable stabilize avabenzone further. So this is not an issue for you guys. Um, but here in the US, for the most part, we just have avabenzone as our chemical filter and we really, really kind of have to lean more towards zinc for our, for our aging, aging protection in our sunscreens. And so the FDA is very apprehensive about the combination of the two. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I get asked a lot like, um, are we jeopardizing our UVA protection by layering different types of sunscreens? Which types are okay to layer on over others? And so, you know, if I were if I were a pure if you're if you're a purist and and, and you're you're really really wed to the idea that that mineral can accelerate the degradation of avabenzone, you want to avoid that risk. Then don't um, combine chemical sunscreens that have avabenzone with mineral sunscreens, okay? Um, so for example, if I were using, if I were using Neutrogena's Clear Pore, which I believe is a chemical, chemical sunscreen with avabenzone, and if I were using one of Neutrogena's chemical sunscreens on my face, they have many great chemical sunscreens for the face, if I were using that, and then I came over it with a mineral sunscreen powder like this, um, if I were at all concerned, you can imagine that potentially the mineral particles in this could accelerate the degradation of my of my base layer UVA protection, okay? Because I'm not going to be putting this really in an even layer to my entire face. It gives good coverage, but it's not the same as the base layer sunscreen. So that's really, you know, that's really one of the caveats to layering sunscreen. It's very subtle and largely theoretical, okay? So it's not something to like necessarily lose sleep over. Um, but, uh, you know, do know that if you're, if you're at all concerned, that layering of chemical and mineral can compromise the avabenzone, okay? And it's not, it's not to say that all chemical filters and minerals can't be combined. So it's not that all or not. It's really just avabenzone and zinc titanium uh, together potentially don't play well together as far as compromising the avabenzone, if that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully it does, because I get a lot of questions about it and it's, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to navigate, you know, for a consumer for sure. So before I go ahead and put this on, I'm just going to go ahead and put on their, um, the tinted, the Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal. I've really been enjoying this, this bad boy. I use it every day. And I don't really use it as an eye cream. I just kind of use it to the apples of my cheeks um, and it blends in really nicely. And you know you can actually blend it in with the with the tip of the of the applicator, but um, I just find that the finger method works pretty well <laughs> for me. All right, and now I'm just going to come on over top with the SPF 50, um, and you know, like I said, when you get this, just make sure you you daub a little bit. It actually goes onto the forehead really well. Um, if you've got a shiny forehead, I find that this this does a good job, um, just kind of mattifying that a little bit. Here in Houston, the humidity is so high um, that sometimes the dewy look can go overboard. So this is wonderful in that it, and then it kind of masks some of that, but it doesn't compromise, it doesn't compromise the sun protection, okay? So it's not rubbing off the sunscreen. Um, it's just, it's just adding that powder, that powder frosting of additional, of additional protection. So it's really a nice addition. So I like it on my forehead, and then I also have been using it, you know, on my nose a little bit. And I kind of like to keep the apples of my cheeks a little bright and shiny, you know, so I look like an elf, but. But the packaging, 
The packaging is really smart. You know, many of you have verbalized to me in the comments that you find when you you reapply your sunscreen throughout the day, as you should be, your base layer sunscreen should should be reapplied throughout the day. And you find that when you do that, and particularly in the summer or you know whatever environment you may be working in, that you you feel like you look like a grease ball. So I really think that this offers a, a good way to kind of to kind of um, hide some of that shininess without compromising the SPF that you've just applied. And what I've also found about the powder is that my sunscreen goes on over it well. So later on when I reapply my base layer sunscreen, I don't have any problem putting sunscreen, either the, the Elta MD UV Clear or the Elta MD UV Sport or you know any of the other sunscreens that I typically use. I have not had any problem putting it over this and then coming back over with a little bit more of this. I don't find that they start to bleed or run or any of the, the pigments from this bleed or run or anything. Likewise, I have not had any problems applying sunscreen over, over their three-in-one eye. So I, I think the vehicles of, and the formulations of their tinted sunscreens are really smart and play really nicely with sunscreens, particularly mineral sunscreens where you know they they can peel up if they're not combined well with other, other makeups. Sometimes you can get that peeling up of the sunscreen, but I haven't had that problem with Color Science and Elta MD or Color Science and some of the other sunscreens that I typically use. So, And I do continue to use their mascara. Um, you know, I admittedly, I, you know, I'm very loyal, brand loyal to my Maybelline Colossal, but I do continue to use their mascara because I think it's really nice. Um, it's actually a very um, nice on the eyelashes. And like I said, I slept with that, like I said, I slept with that eye mask on last night, that fab fit, that not so fab fit fun <laughs> eye mask. And so I just kind of want to be gentle on my eyelashes. Not that the Maybelline Colossal isn't gentle, but I do find that this, the formula of the Color Science one is like slightly more, I don't want to say moisturizing. It's not as long, it doesn't elongate to the extent as the Maybelline Colossal. And I'm just putting a little of my Vanny Cream Lip SPF on here as a finishing touch. I hope you guys enjoyed um, me reviewing this for you all. I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, as I mentioned, I think that this is a great product for people who have both oily skin and they're trying to mask the shine, people who have dry skin and are concerned that the powder will settle in and exacerbate the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, and dryness. I think you won't find that to be the case with this particular powder because it is a it is kind of a nice moisturizing vehicle and the particles scatter light nicely and actually reflect away from some of those wrinkles and fine lines. I really think this is phenomenal for people with sensitive skin or rosacea, minimal irritating ingredients, great sun protection, which is key for rosacea, great sun protection and great blue light protection, key for people with hyperpigmentation and melasma. Um, this plays really well with your base layer zinc uh, based sunscreens. And so, you know, this, this can really be a phenomenal frosting on the cake, meaning um, frosting on your base layer of sunscreen, frosting on that cake for you guys. Um, and I, I really like this and I think I will, con I definitely will continue to use it as I have continued to use their, um, their other, their tinted sun, their tinted sunscreen in the eye, eye cream vehicle. Um, I found that I've really enjoyed using that. Two dark spots on the apples of my cheeks. I think they make really good tinted products and you know you all seem to enjoy them. Um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!